we have a couple of more people checking in, so we'll start in just a second. All right. Good morning. Welcome to springtime, the May Assembly. We'll begin with hearing from Pastor Leslie. Good morning. Each day it seems we are bombarded with gun violence. It's hard not to be devastated by the way we as human beings hurt one another. I've heard some of you say that you don't watch the news anymore because the news of war and violence in our world is just too much. It's hard not to despair and it's hard not to lose hope. I found a quote this week that I want to share with you. It is this, be willing to be a beginner every single morning. It's by Meister Eckhart. Eckhart was a German mystic from the 1200s, and he worked hard to make the mysteries of God understood. He has acquired a status as a great mystic within the contemporary popular spirituality, as well as to be considerable interest from scholars situate, situating him within the medieval scholastic and philosophical traditions. This quote encourages, uh, encourages us to make each day count, to celebrate each day as it comes, and to take advantage of new life. Is it, it is exciting to me as I think about what you are facing here with resident council. Today marks the first time you will meet as a whole with your new officers, and the promise for each idea and exciting possibilities reigns supreme as you meet today for the first time. We are in the spring of the new year. Flowers are budding, trees are blooming, leafing out, and birds are singing. Everywhere you look, there is something new happening. So of course we long for newness of life, to find that here at the Hearthstone. So where do you find newness in your life? Perhaps you find it in your daily prayers or meditations, Perhaps you find it in your daily walks outside where you, the fresh air and sunshine lifts your spirits. Perhaps you feel the new day when you exercise, stretching your muscles and strengthening your bones. We feel better when we move our bodies and our brains. Activities are increasing and there are more events to attend than we, and we will give us happiness and stimulate our imaginations. Yes, life is picking up as the weather improves and activities increase and we are giving thanks for the beauty of the earth and the possibilities that await us. Let us pray. Most gracious God, we thank you for the beautiful weather and the blooming flowers and trees. Our neighborhood is lovely this time of year and we are grateful. We pray for our nation and our world that the hearts of the violent would be softened and your mercy would sustain them in their vitriol. We ask your blessings on our work here at the Hearthstone. Bless our council that we might do works worthy of each task. Bless our community and keep us mindful of the ways we can serve. In your name we pray, amen. To move this up just a little. Well, um, I will call the meeting to order. There you go. Uh, so, first, I want to I want to pick up something that I neglected doing last time. Two people who were on the executive committee last year who did a tremendous amount of work and I didn't recognize. And that's uh, our past treasurer, Jim Killingsworth, yes. who did it, did it a lot. And Eleanor Kreisdag, who was a great secretary. 
thank you to both of you. So um, I'm going to give you a sense of where we're going. We have a packed agenda today. I hope you've pick, picked it up in the back. Uh, we're, going, we're going to do a, a couple of business things, then hear from various representatives from Hearthstone Management, and then we will get to our business, which uh, there, there are a number of, of reports that we'll have. So what we'll start with is um, the report from uh, Treasury minutes and whatnot. I don't know if you all know everybody at this table. Uh, no, I heard. OK, then it gives me the opportunity to welcome our vice president, Georgia Oystad. Secretary Meg Ludlam. Uh, Treasurer, Allison Bacciello. <laughs> Member at large, Carolyn Leon. <laughs> Immediate past president, the Honorable Therese Atkinson. <laughs> I just feel like I've just announced the lineup to a basketball game. <laughs> so we'll start with the approval of the minutes. May, get yours. Is it working? Yes. It's working. OK, well, uh, the minutes have been sent out, and I hope you've all had a chance to look at them. Um, there have been, since that time, there have been some changes in the people who are listed as taking new offices. But they'll, be, by virtue of, the, of my saying that, that will appear in the next set of minutes. So I'm looking for a motion to approve the minutes. And all in favor? Opposed? The minutes are approved. The example of efficiency. <laughs> Treasurer's report. Allison? Oh, I hope you can hear me. All right. Um, I wanted just to let all of you know, where, where does the money come from that is in the treasure, treasurer's uh, balance that I deal with and that past treasurers have dealt with. It comes from the C's candy sales. So um, that's a little ways off, but I thought I'd just put that in your mind, that what supports the money that we spend and give out to the library and Medic One and other expenses that we incur, it comes from those monies that are raised from the C's candy sales. So keep that in mind, and it, it's a good thing to have a box of candy either for yourselves or for presents. The uh, current, the uh, ex there was one expense from the March, April Treasury, and that was ninety-one dollars and eight cents to the library. So I hope you're enjoying perhaps some of their new books. The current balance is $2,614.37. Thank you. All right. So we have a really important program, uh, the Employee Appreciation Fund. And member at large, Carolyn Leon, has been running that and has a few words to say. Good morning, friends. Good morning. As I look around at you, I think I recognize almost all of you. So I don't know how many. I think you're probably, I'm probably preaching to the choir. Maybe you know everything I'm going to tell you. But um, the Employee Appreciation Fund is a wonderful fund. And it's not, we now have our own fund. And all the monies you give go right in, into it. And it benefits all of our, our hourly staff. And we have many hourly staff. Um, sometimes it's known as the holiday fund because it's in early December that we distribute that money to the hourly staff. But we can collect the money all year long. So from now on, you'll be hearing from me. And I have one main goal. And that is to inspire you to give generously. These, for the past year or so, 
the form has been on this bright yellow, and we're hoping to keep this form, this color, so when you know when you see it, this is what it's all about. And I've got several, several of them up here. If you have questions, so on, just come up and ask me about them. And, and you know that you can give either monthly or you can give in write checks anytime you want. It doesn't have to be just at the end of the year, but there are those two main ways to give. Any questions, come up and see me. My task today is just to give a little vignette that maybe will help inspire you to give. Do you, can you see what this is? Nail polish. Guess what happened to me a couple weeks ago? I opened my medicine cabinet door and it was on the top shelf. It had slid closer to the edge and it fell out, landed on my sink, down to the floor, and broke. And so I had a puddle of nail polish on, and my apartment has those little about one inch tiles with the, gr the grout, and, uh, gr 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 grout, grout in between them. And I knew I did not have time to call housekeeping because I had to get it cleaned up before it dried. So I grabbed toilet paper, washcloths, anything I could to try to clean up the excess. And then my best tool for cleaning in the grout was a Q-tip. Now you can imagine how effective a Q-tip was. And anyway, I worked and worked, and, and uh, I, then I, well, after I tried to clean it up, I poured on some um, nail polish remover, <laughs> did that, and then I poured on some bleach, and then I, <laughs> and it wasn't bad. I really was quite proud of myself. But a cup. <laughs> A couple days later, the cleaning woman w came to my floor and was ready to clean the apartment across from me, and I just snagged her for a moment, and I told her what happened. And she said, well, let me take a look. She came in. She said, well, you know, you really did a pretty good job, but I think I've got a cleaning agent better than what you have, and I certainly have better tools. She came in on the spot, down on her hands and knees, rubbed very hard for about five minutes, and you cannot see a thing on my floor. Of course, I could say thank you to her verbally. I would like to have been able to give her a tip. Am I allowed to give her a tip? No. That's why we have the Employee Appreciation Fund, so that we can say generously to the staff that serve us in all different capacities, every day, and we can't get along without them. So I encourage you to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Tim, be careful, because now we know if 5555 doesn't respond, call Carolyn. <laughs> he has an open position, Carolyn, if you're interested in going back to work. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, let's hear now from a series of reports from the Hearthstone staff, and we'll start with Pedro. All right. Good morning, everybody. So I do have actually a, a short story. Um, to share. I don't know if some of you guys know that I used to uh, commute from Tacoma, actually. I've been here for about a month, I think, a little over a month, and I've been driving back and forth all this time. And uh, I finally get to move to the Seattle area, so I'm excited about that. So my apartment complex where I live is wonderful. Everyone is excited to meet my dog, but not me. <laughs> and that, that's something that I find interesting every time to a, every time I moved somewhere because everyone's excited to say hi to my dog, but not to me. And that's okay. I'm used to it at this point. Uh, but very happy to be around the Seattle area. It, it's wonderful. Uh, okay. So the first thing that I would like to share with you guys is: so last week we had our first resident engagement advisory committee. Um, it went very well. It was the first time that we were doing it. I think it was happening before in the past, and I think the dining department has one as well. 
So I think we did that and it went very well. I think we have every representative from every floor. I think we missed a couple of floors, I believe. So, and I have copies for those of you who would like to, I created a minutes report. So if you're interested about what we talked about, the topics that we went over, I could give you a copy. Um, and for, we really went, it really went well because we really were able to pinpoint the things that we wanna work on. And one of the things that it's happening next month and I'm really excited to announce this is, number one is the volunteer program. That it's, we're gonna start next month, we relaunching it next month. And this is really excited because we're gonna have a lot of people from outside the community coming in and working with us, working with you guys. We're just finishing up, putting, putting the final touches on a couple of things, but uh, it's happening next month. Also, for those of you who would like to volunteer, please let me know. What I'm doing is I'm gonna create a, a sign-up sheet, and this is regarding the, uh, the pedicaps. I know some of you like to take residents out, kind of volunteer and take people out, which is great. And I'm gonna create a system where it will help everyone to stay organized, right? So one day you'll be able to see who's coming in at a certain time. And we have residents, of course, volunteering as well. So you'll be able to see who's available on each day. Uh, the way it's looking right now, uh, I have already three volunteers that are ready to come in and you know, take residents out. They're really excited, but again, we just need to finalize a couple of things regarding some requirements and we should be good to go. So we're really excited about that. Um, you can contact Nancy. I know some of you guys don't know who she is, uh, but for the next committee, which is happening next month, and by the way, this happens every second Thursday of each month at 11 a.m. at the upstairs, at, by the bar upstairs in the dining area. Um, so at, that happens every single second Thursday of each month. Um, and I'm gonna have the rest of my team, they're gonna be there with me so uh, you guys get to meet them, ask questions, that way you know who's gonna be in charge of what, and you can ask questions, because what I notice is that most people know me and they're asking me questions, which is fine. Uh, but I want you guys as well to be the rest of the team. They usually work in different areas, so assistant living, memory care, the health center, so they usually stick around those areas. Um, but I think it's important for you guys as well to meet them and kind of interact with them and get to know them a little better. So that's... At what time? 11 a.m. 11 a.m. Yeah, and I would make postings, of course, touch down, and I make flyers, and we'll, be, we'll post it all over the place. Uh, the other thing that I would like to share with you guys is the newsletter. So I don't know if you guys know about this. The Harston newsletter will be launched next month as well, June. Yeah. It has a lot of good information about the Harston community. Uh, I've been able to collect information from Pastor Leslie, uh, for uh, Rachel, which is, I think is a uh, nutritionist, and a couple of the departments as well. So. I've been able to gather a lot of information to put it in the newsletter. It's looking great. Uh, I'm gonna send it out this upcoming Friday and it's, I guess, looking great. There's a lot of good information that I want you guys to know and this will be a monthly newsletter. Uh, it will be different from this park, different information, but I think it will be important for you guys to know about what's going on around the community on a monthly basis. So really good information coming out next month. Uh, and if you have any questions about it, let me know. Uh, I know the, one of the reasons why we created the advisory committee will be because that way it's easy for you guys to communicate with me, right? So we have a representative from each floor, they come to the meeting, they express their concerns, their ideas, the things that they wanna do moving forward, and that way it's easy for me to you know, do my homework, right? Uh, but again, you know my door is always open downstairs. If you see me running around, please feel free to grab me and ask me any questions. Um, so those are the main things that are happening next month. We're really excited about it. And again, if there's anything that you would like to know more about, let me know, shoot me an email, call me, uh, I'm always available. Um, those are the, the two major pro projects happening next month. We're really excited about it. Moving forward, we have a few things happening as well. Uh, we focus a little more about the patio areas and the cove garden as well. 
Uh, now that the weather's getting better, we could do maybe some activities over there. Uh, those areas we're really looking to really explore a little more, and that's gonna be a little maybe down the road, maybe at mid-June, at the end of June, probably start looking into that more. Um, and adding more wellness programs for assisted living and the licensed areas as well. Uh, my main, I oversee the independence living area, uh, but I'm also trying my best to take care of all areas as well, right? So assisted living memory care at the health center, right? And I'm working with the rest of my team to uh, keep the ball rolling. I think we have a good thing going on in these areas, but we wanna expand what, what we have in place already. I know. A lot of residents had approached me and say, we're really excited, we wanna do all these things. Uh, I was really excited actually when I got to meet with, uh, I don't remember when this meeting happened, but they gave me a list of uh, locations and trips and places that residents would love to get, uh, would love to go, and I, I think that's great. That gives me an idea of the places that most people wanna go, and I think that's exciting, right? So uh, I'll be working with Eric uh, about, the, about the bus trips, which, that's uh, the last point that I wanna share with you guys. I know that as of now, only Thursdays uh, we use for big outings or big trips, right? We're gonna add one more day between the week, which will be Tuesday. So not only Thursdays, will be Tuesdays and Thursdays that we'll have a big outing somewhere. And we're gonna use that list that the residents were able to provide me with. Um, so moving forward, starting in June, We'll have Tuesdays and Thursdays for big outings. So that we're really excited about that. Eric's is excited about that. We already have a schedule ready to go. So starting in June, and you guys will know about the starting date, of course. Uh, we'll have uh, an outing Tuesday, each Tuesday and Thursday moving forward. So we're really excited about that. Um, big things happening, guys. So again, I'm, I'm you know, again, if, if anything that you would like to share with me, please let me know. This is really, really helpful. I'm excited to be here. You know, I've been here for a month only, but I think we're, we're making things happen and I wanna keep this momentum going. So uh, that's what I have to share. Thank you. Thank you. It's pretty exciting. Good stuff. Vaccines and all of that stuff. Let's hear from Rosie. Round of applause for Rosie. Not yet? Not yet? Okay, wait. She says wait. Good morning, everyone. Um, I think it's clear that Pedro is the right person for this resident engagement role, right? We have, we've taken all of your notes, we've heard you, we've been listening, and this advisory committee, I think, is going to help us have a very successful program every day of the year, right? So clear communication is key. So I'll transition over to a COVID update. So a couple things happen in the month of May. Um, we were trying to coordinate a vaccine clinic for the community. We were waiting for uh, the right timing and coordination. And then uh, we learned early week before last that um, we had a visitor come to our community who is a caregiver with an outside agency. However, she also visits residents that she just has learned to love here at the Hearthstone and visited with and perhaps worked with in the past. Um, so she had come to visit, didn't realize until the evening of that same day, she was not feeling well, she took a COVID test, she had been exposed and she tested positive. Now, what she did do was call each resident that she felt met the exposure definition and called them all individually, but did not call any staff members at the Hearthstone that Friday night. Uh, we then heard on Monday, because she had um, called in to let her client know that she would be off that day because she had tested positive and that she had to quarantine. So word gets to my team, we realize, oh my gosh, probably have a huge outbreak, we have to roll out our protocol, start testing, start screening for symptoms. Um, and we notified every resident that had been impacted. Once we had a handle of what was truly going on here at the Hearthstone, um, 
Emmy and I then started working on a mitigation plan, of course, and then I believe it was Friday the 5th, um, a Hearthstone announcement went out. Hallie helped us create that document and it went out to all residents. Um, those that do not use technology, they received a hard copy of this announcement. So not sure if everyone read it. It was a, a COVID update, am I sure? Um, Hallie, what is the actual name of that document? Uh, COVID-19 update, this is the second. Okay, That's, so, so the COVID-19 update. Uh, not an announcement, sorry. Uh, all the information was in there about the individual and those were impacted, we were notifying them. So that was the notification that went out. Um, now, since then, we've had, we had three groups that we identified because of the lateness of our team's learning of this exposure. Um, Residents had gone about their business. They attended uh, group events. They uh, had gone to the dining room, some of them for three days, three meals with four or five residents uh, they would dine with. The number exponentially grew. Um, however, the outcome of it was that we had the one positive resident. So someone that the person had visited and exposed did become positive in the independent living but that caregiver visited others in the assisted living, the health center, and that IL resident had many meals with multiple people, okay? So that was the reason for all of the testing with a multitude of individual residents here, for that reason alone. Um, we did not identify any other positives, which is great. Everyone did a fantastic job, and I have to hand it to our Hearthstone residents and staff. We are all experts at our COVID protocol and following that. Because of that, we now we're able to identify three groups of residents. Groups one and two have been removed from their precautions. They are dining, they're doing everything as usual as of yesterday. We have one more group. They will be released from their precautions tomorrow. That will be the end of the outbreak at the Heartstone. Okay, so just in time for Mother's Day, which now brings me to the COVID vaccine clinics. Now, some of us, when we receive the vaccine, we have side effects. It's trying to avoid that over the Mother's Day holiday coming up. So I was intentionally trying to either move it two weeks prior to Mother's Day or the week after Mother's Day. And with all the developments with the COVID positive case, of course, we pushed it to next week. These clinics will be occurring between Wednesday and Friday of next week. So we will be publishing this. You're hearing it here first. Um, Lakeside residents will uh, be scheduled starting at 9 a.m on Wednesday the 17th. We're going to start on floor 10 and work our way down to floor five. There'll be a sign-up sheet for that. Though we'll have the um, consent form that needs to be completed. Uh, Ariana will be your point person for that clinic. On Thursday the 18th, Health Center Assisted Living and Memory Care uh, will have their clinics starting at 9 a.m. and then the pharma pharmacy team, they will move on to assisted living and memory care thereafter. So um, time is a little open. So the, the point, the individual point person there we have is uh, Emmy and Sarah. Sarah is our resident care manager in the health center. And the reason I'm sharing all this with you is that any of you who cannot make it to the one clinic that's designated for your community, you're welcome to come to any of these as well. Uh, so then on Friday, the 19th, we will have our clinics over at uh, the bridge for Cove East and Cove West. The point person again will be Ariana. The start time again will be 9 a.m. And again, there will be a sign-in sheet and the um, consent forms. Anything else COVID that I can answer for you that I may have missed? Yes. Yes. Yes, there you go. Good advice. When you are in groups, anywhere that you go, if you have a group, I would say, larger than 10, you should wear a mask. If you're unable to socially distance six feet, wear a mask.
That's it. <laughs> yes, Can Carolyn. Just review for me when a person does step five day appointment. Who's the person you call right away? Yes, it's the front desk. You alert the front desk, and then an email goes out to the COVID committee. And the, the COVID committee has a representative from every department um, here at the Hearthstone um, as far as staff go. Um, leadership, directors, managers, um, they will all be notified, and then th those managers know what action to take. They then notify their teams. We're going to stop housekeeping services. We're going to uh, not dispatch our maintenance team to uh, 5555 calls or work sub calls unless they are urgent. Um, <clears throat> and then that alerts Emmy, who is our infection preventionist, to start tracking and surveilling um, the virus and our mitigation plan. So that's what will happen. And then also Pastor Leslie and June Chef are, um, our independent living and assisted living social worker will assist you with testing. And they'll remind you of those testing days, one, three, and five, okay? So just let the front desk know and everything else will go into motion. Yes. You can, yes. So the question is, if you're out of town and you you are not on the premises during May 17th and May 19th for these clinics, can the same pharmacy provide a vaccine for you? Absolutely. It's uh, located over at FOSS. They do have sort of an outpatient clinic. We can help you coordinate it. You can um, contact June. She can talk with you about it. Ariana can speak with you about it. And basically, we're going to give you the contact information to the pharmacy over at FOSS to coordinate. They have open clinic times. FOSS Homes is another senior community here in Seattle. Uh, they happen to lease out their basement space to Otterson's Pharmacy. Yeah, it's a little quirky thing, but I've known Sonia, the pharmacist there, for about seven years, and um, she's the owner and pharmacist of Otterson's. So she's been a wonderful partner, very flexible, and is always happy to come and coordinate these clinics uh, for us here at the Heartstone. Yes? Yes, I believe that is still the protocol. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, so the question was, if you tested positive for COVID, do you wait 90 days before you get a vaccine? And I said, I believe the answer is yes, but we can get frequently asked questions distributed uh, to you all. We can post them on Touchtown. Um, I, I didn't send them out because they're a little complex and um, I would like Emmy to review them first before we send them out, but hopefully we can get them out uh, before end of day tomorrow and those will answer those questions. And um, the, the pharmacy, uh, I'm sorry, the pharmacist and uh, the pharmacy techs that work with her, they're happy to troubleshoot that with you and you're not wasting their time if you come in and you don't meet that time frame, they'll explain to you um, when you should come back or go see them at their outpatient clinic. Better safe than sorry. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so it's a, it's a bivalent booster, and that is what the CDC is recommending. So um, the, the, the other type of vaccine, I'll just simplify it, was a one dose, single dose. That was your Janssen and Janssen, right? So CDC is not standing by that vaccine any longer. So it isn't necessarily a new booster. It's still, um, it's still a defense against the Omicron virus, uh, but it needs to be a bivalent where you have the series of um, vaccines like we all did. We had dose one and two, then we were, we were then fully vaccinated. Now we just use the term up to date. And so now you've all read in the newspaper, watched the newscast, which indicates um, that we should have boosters once again. And really they're looking at the four month time period because its efficacy really starts to dwindle after month four. So, mm -hmm. yes. 
Hello, Franz. Yeah. Here. Uh, I have to say, oh, you need a microphone. Yeah. Okay. Is it on? Yeah. yeah, all right. So what I have to say has to do with the way this current uh, problem about COVID occurred. On Thursday, a week ago today, <coughs> uh, Johanna uh, in the, uh, in the uh, dining room called me and said, you are on 10 days quarantine. Uh, a little later in the afternoon, June came from uh, uh, from so, social uh, service. Excuse me, Franz. So I'm going to interrupt you for a moment because I know that Frank started this meeting with the fact that this is a jam-packed meeting. And so I wanted to end my time here by adding the fact that I am happy to attend any floor meetings or building meetings for 2023. I was invited to all of them in 2022, but lots has, has changed with COVID, resident engagement, all sorts of other departments, you know, under my, my purview, including dining services. I'm happy to speak about individual experiences with COVID and communications, as well as speaking to floors, um, because you, all of your neighbors know you well, you can all uh, share any concerns with me and I'm happy to have the conversation. I don't know that we should take everyone's time to speak about an incident that occurred from someone's point of view. And I'm sorry I, if there was miscommunication, um, and I'm happy to discuss it outside of here. Well, Rose, I think it is important. It's a big problem of communication all around that I personally did not get any information at all for four days between Thursday and Monday when I was able to talk to Amy. But my initial uh, information from June was that I had been exposed to the person in health center who had been exposed. Uh, so that I would be a secondary person. Now, in fact, uh, the health department doesn't recognize the secondary uh, exposures at all. I tried to call you, mm -hmm. Rosie, uh, twice on Friday, got no answer. So all this time, I did not know what my status was. And I believed that my status was uh, improper. Uh, then on Monday, I found out that it was not that person, but was somebody in the dining room that I was, just, uh, was exposed to. Well, fine. OK, that I can understand. And then the extent originally was supposed to be 10 days. And then when I talked with Amy, it was eight days. So there are all kinds of things going on which I was not informed about. And I'm sure that's true of lots of other residents, all the 16 or so people who were involved. And I think we should really take notice of that and be more careful about informing us of what's going on. Sure, thank you, noted. Any other questions? Thank you. Comments? That may be my time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, and I think it's important uh, what Rosie said is, is for those individual situations on various floors, she's very happy to come and talk to a floor meeting. So if you want that to happen, simply ask. All right, how about the physical plant? Here's our man, Tim. <laughs> Tim. Can I take this off? Sure. Thank you. You can see my smile. 
Okay, so here's what I'm not going to talk about today. I'm not going to talk about elevators. <laughs> and I'm not going to talk about heat in the coves. Okay? But um, it's going to get hot this weekend, extremely hot. So things that we always want to remind you of is hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. If you get too thirsty, you're already not hydrated. So hydrate throughout the weekend. Um, if you go out, sunscreen, okay, even if it's for a few moments because the UV rating is going to be extremely high. So take care of yourself. If you do not have AC in your units and wish it, now is the time to ask because by Saturday or Sunday, it's going to be too late and we won't be able to help you because um, the heat load will be just through the roof kind of thing. So I'm going to start with weather and I'm going to focus on outside stuff mostly because um, that's where I've been getting kind of my questions over the past month. So um, sidewalks, I'll start with sidewalks. Uh, we finally have a um, proposal uh, that I signed off on earlier this week, and we identified at minimum 22, spa 22 spots around the campus or building uh, that need to be addressed, leveled, or addressed in some way. Uh, of those 22, four are what I would call critical. Uh, so I have a bid to level, raise, and adjust the sidewalks around the building, but the four critical ones are gonna take the help of others uh, to accomplish. And I reached out to Frank yesterday and he knows people in the city of Seattle that are, is gonna help me uh, because it's because of trees, tree roots, things like that, and you have to get the city involved, we gotta get an arborist involved, uh, things like that, because we have to protect the trees also. And it's gonna require uh, cutting roots. So we wanna make sure we do it correctly, um, if at all. One of the worst spots is just right here at this corner over here where it's really buckled quite, quite a bit. And we still wanna address them, but it's gonna take a little more time than just the leveling piece. So you'll see that happening very soon. Um, and thank you, Frank, I appreciate that. Uh, grounds maintenance, oh wow, that's a good topic right now. I got a lot of calls from the coves on uh, what's not being done um, as opposed to what is being done. So um, this company, and they're currently in the 30-day window of their contract, so this is a good time to have this conversation. Uh, this company has typically been doing what we call mow, blow, and go, okay? That's it. However, when you read their agreement, they are required to do very specific things that aren't being done. Okay, today. Uh, during the month of May, they typically are going to be out here once a week, okay? They're going to be mowing, they're going to be blowing, they're going to be edging, they're going to be picking up trash, they're going to be picking up litter, um, all of those kinds of things that aren't really happening like they should be. Yeah. The other piece is not, the other piece that's not happening with them is they're required to do a monthly QA uh, with me or the director and that has not been occurring also. So I've sent out an email to their president, representative, and asked him to meet with me so that we can go over their current agreement, do a QA of the entire campus again, or community, and uh, see where we stand. Because now's the time to, if we need to, to go with another contractor. Um, I got calls like, oh, the worker bees are sitting in their truck for 45 minutes not doing anything, okay? Um, I appreciate those calls. Uh, because that's information I could send off to their supervisor. But I really expect him to be out here also uh, supervising them. That's what we pay him for um, kind of thing. So hopefully you'll see some change with that. I have a very clear understanding of their cope, scope of work now and can manage it from here on um, out. Um, what else? Security. Um, this is not only outside, this is inside, and it's also our processes. Um, about the third week of June, I'm expecting our Sodexo corporate security director uh, to come out here, and he's going to do a couple of things for us. 
One, he's going to be doing a full audit, uh, looking at our current processes for security, for key cards, for training, and all of those kinds of things, and tell me where are the gaps uh, that we need to address. He's also going to be providing some training specific to our residents and then some training specific to our staff here on some ways of maintaining your own safety in the community. So he's working on the curriculum as we speak. I expect to see it by the first week of June what the curriculum will look like and then I could share that with, with um, whomever um, in the setting. We're planning on doing two days with this gentleman at minimum uh, for a really um, good assessment and then two days of training also. So we may have four classes of training um, or two really big trainings kind of things. Questions? Yes. Either you take, uh, yes, you can take them off, and or my team will come up and take them off. They just need to know where they're at, okay, kind of thing. Because yes, now is the time to take them off. Yes. Oh, I, I forgot to talk about that. I'm sorry. She was asking about the underground watering system, the irrigation system. Okay, self-discovery always with me. Uh, this first year. What I have found is there are eight zones around this building. I know that for a fact now. Eight zones around this building for irrigation and a brand new clock was put in last year. What didn't occur last year is that clock was never put into operation, okay, <laughs> and is not functional, okay, and that's, that's the truth. Um, and I'm sure the Hearthstone paid good money for that service. So again, we've reached out to the contractor. He needs to get back in. He needs to fix said clock and check our irrigation. That's also in their contract and their agreement. Okay, yes. That's an unknown at this point. I am not 100% sure on the Cove West irrigation. I'm focusing on this one because it's obvious that there's a lot of breaks uh, in the system around this building um, at this moment. I will find out about the coves for you guys, okay? Because that's where some of the other concerns come from is the, the garden areas and stuff like that. You know, there's not a lot of grass, but it needs to be kept and maintained. Uh, and we need to blow things off. We need to make sure that we're taking care of all of our outside areas. Yes? That is not in my bucket. Uh, that's going to be in somebody else's bucket. So I think Frank is going to speak to it as much as he can. Okay. Okay. Are we good? Yeah. Thank you, guys. Wow. Listen carefully. Thank you, Tim. <laughs> okay, now we're done with that. I am going to change my name, though. No, don't you dare change your name. Tony. <laughs> so... Um, Jackie asked the question about what's happening in the lower level. The last that we've heard is that they're still in the very early design thing of what, what's possible, and it's not gone beyond that. But we have been assured that as, and when the first kind of general, here's what could be done, it will be brought to residents. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, hopefully before it's constructed, yes. Yeah, Ab absolutely. Speaking of construction and revamping parts of the building, like apartments and whatnot, what's going on in marketing and sales? Yay. Hey, come on, Jill. Good morning. I wanted to start by thanking all of you so much for being so friendly and open and receptive and engaging when I'm out giving tours. Good? Um, 
You are all tremendous assets to my efforts. You are all tremendous assets to my efforts. <laughs> and your assessment of life in the community is invaluable in the sales process. So thank you so much for that. Um, I have four things to cover, four topics to cover today. Sales. <laughs> Sales activity, IL occupancy, um, what's happening with the wait list, and some general marketing topics. Um, year to date, we've collected entrance fees just shy of $2 million. Um, we have forthcoming fees coming in based on commitments already in place that will put us at about $2.7 million by the end of June. That, might, that makes my monthly pays $452,000 a month. All right. Um, when we look at IL occupancy, we analyze it two ways. We use a sales occupancy number, and then we use an actual occupancy number. Um, the sales occupancy number pertains to the apartments that are ready to sell now that aren't being reserved or being held for some other purpose. And so that occupancy number right now is 96%. Then we have an actual occupancy number which pertains to every apartment in the community, regardless of its status, that is not currently earning revenue. And that percentage is 90. Um, we have some rent-ready vacancies, uh, three studios and three one-bedrooms in the Lakeside Building. In Cove West, we have two one-bedrooms. And wait for it, Cove East is 100% sold. Um, we are still seeing major demand for larger apartments, which we're addressing as we can when we have vacancies adjacent to each other. Um, for that reason, please don't read too much into the significance of what feels like long-term vacancies that you may see around the community. Um, On to the wait list. We still have a very robust wait list. It's 300 plus people strong. It's a significant management endeavor for sure. Um, interest continues to be very strong, not only with wait list members, but with people who are exploring the Hearthstone and thinking about getting on the wait list. Um, we're actively growing that membership. That's an important thing for us to do for the long-term sustainability of the community, which brings me to marketing. Um, Reggie, Ariana, and I are in charge of and shepherding the Hearthstone's brand image and brand voice. Um, we work with a third party called Apex Media and Marketing. They handle the vast majority of our marketing efforts, and um, ma the majority of those efforts are digital. Um, many of you in this room fit the demographic, geographic obviously, and socioeconomic profile of our target market. So it's very likely that you have seen or will see some of our ads. They will be served to you on Facebook or Instagram because you meet that profile. Um, so far our collaboration with Apex has been very successful. We've significantly improved our website traffic. That's where we want to drive all inquiries so that we can track those and gain greater insight about who's interested in living here. Um, we've successfully improved our rank position in search results. And what that means is that when you go online and search CCRC Seattle, Independent Living Seattle, Retirement Living Seattle, we want the Hearthstone to show up at the top of those results. And that's happening more now than it was before we started working with Eric and his firm. Um, and we've elevated our social media presence, which is, some, which is what we call in marketing top of the funnel stuff. So getting a bigger and more robust social media presence allows us to be seen by more people, and that in turn brings more people into the process with us. So all of these efforts are very much a work in progress. We're constantly optimizing and evaluating what we're doing and making sure that we're being, that all of our goals are being met for marketing and outreach. Um, all of these activities can and will be leveraged to attract more prospective residents to the community, to get the wait list to continue to grow, to recruit employees, and to continue to further our best in class market position.
Thank you, Jill. Yeah. That's all good news, isn't it? Yeah. We like that. All right. So now we come to us. So some people are leaving from the, the <laughs> see this? We're done. They're getting out of here. Thank you for coming. So let's leap to uh, what's going on with us. And Penny's here for a, uh, a report on the dining committee. Thank you. You want to stand up here and do that? Oh, I'll figure it out. Here you go. Thank you, Frank. You bet. Hi, everybody. I think. Um, you right in, right in oh, right there. Like oh, okay. There Almost you. kiss it, I guess. Yes, <laughs> okay. that's right. Okay. Um, I'm really happy to be here. I think all of us feel that things are really looking up with the, our dining experience and that there's still some room for improvement. I only want to take a few minutes because I know we're running late, but I do want to do... I, I want to do... Um, mention two things. One, I want to mention the new members on our committee and then talk a little bit about your suggestions about dining improvements. Our new uh, reps are, for Cove East, Terry Pointer, and she's also our new secretary. Cove West, Betty Woito. The fifth floor of Lakeside, Ann Joyce. Sixth floor, Molly Mowat. Seventh floor, Issa Warney and eighth floor, Jeff Steele. And um, it's very good feeling to have some new representatives on our committee. And in the future, if you want to, I'm sorry, in the future, if you want to ha have a really good um, committee experience, I recommend considering our committee. It's a lot of fun. And it's much more fun than it was a few years ago. Um, I want to say actually three words about resident um, satisfaction in terms of your kudos, your suggestions, and your questions. Keep them coming. This past month, Joe Barron and John Eldridge reported that in February, satisfaction was 77%. In March, it went up to 84%, which is really phenomenal in terms of a, a community of over 200 people. And then in April, it was 77%, so it, it dropped. So I am urging you to read the minutes which are being, which, I'm sorry, I urge you to read the minutes which are coming out right after this meeting, and you will probably see the reasons for that. Um, Staff consistently track all forms of input to help plan and make adjustments. So it is really critical that you keep your comments coming. And if you can, if you have a specific concern or issue, please include your name and John Eldridge or Joe Barron will be coming back to you to identify your situation especially if you have some nutritional issues that are personal to you, please include your name. And in those instances, Rachel Hungerford, the dietitian, and John will work with you to um, refine your needs. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, Penny. Oh, you want some help? You got it. Okay, so now if you look at the agenda behind me, it says Don Bell is next. But if you also look down a couple, you'll see that Lisa is going to talk a little bit. Well, Lisa is here, has to go teach a class. So we're gonna have Lisa come up now to talk about um, her desire to meet with the various floors. So Lisa, come on up. Thank you for that warm welcome. Um, so thank you to Frank and Jim for suggesting that I attend the meeting and giving me a few moments of your time. What we would like to do, if you don't know, I work for Consanus Age Strong and we're building the wellness program here at your community. And you all 
all an integral part of that. We want your input, we want your thoughts, we want to get to know you better. And so I would like to have someone from our team attend all of the resident floor meetings over the next one to three months. I would say one month, but I don't know if that's realistic because um, there's a lot of floors. So I'm hoping that you would all be open to that. It would allow us to share information about the programming in a more intimate manner and also to get your input um, and suggestions. So I, I think, is do I need to mention anything else on that piece or just see if it's okay with the residents? What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Okay, and so I will work with Frank to get a list of the floor reps uh, and ways to contact them and we'll start working towards making that happen starting in June. The one other thing I wanted to mention, and my apologies, I don't think I mentioned this, is that we would like to form a resident fitness committee, which would then become a, like an advisory brainstorm consultant group that we would meet with on a monthly basis. If we were making changes or wanted to add something new, we would talk to you all first, get your input, your thoughts, and go from there. Um, and so I don't know how quickly that'll happen or how we will make that happen, but I, I can um, talk to Frank about that further after the meeting. Any questions? Thank you for a few moments of your time. Thank you. Thank you very much. You know, when she said that she's going to set up a committee, I immediately thought, I think what we need to do is to have a committee that's responsible for monitoring committees Good heavens. <laughs> Speaking of committees, let's hear about the movie committee. Don Bell. Good morning, everybody. So you have a very active, vibrant movie committee. Uh, we're a bunch of movie freaks, and we talk about movies, and then we plan programs for movies. So right now, we're in the middle of May, uh, and our primary focus in, our, in, in showing movies here, right in this room, is every Saturday night. We have a program about, and it's uh, every week is a movie set in and, and about Africa. Um, we also, this, this month, are doing a special series of movies on Tuesday nights, which are science fiction. And you've seen those, you see the advertising, so I won't go into that, except to s suggest that they're there for you, they cost you nothing except a little bit of time, and by God, we uh, pop popcorn for every one of them. Okay, next month, uh, we just planned this yesterday in, in the committee. Next month is going to be a very interesting month because uh, our regular Saturday evening movies are going to be all about newspapers and their impact upon our democracy because, as we know, they're beginning to go away. And uh, it has an impact on our very being in this country. And so here are the four movies that we're going to show in June. First, um, His Gal Friday, which is a 1940 movie. Um, I won't go any, into any detail about these. The second one will be All of the President's Men. The third will be Spotlight. And the fourth will be The Post. The common uh, thing of, of all four, of the, well, of the last three is investigative journalism, which is the heart and soul of what we need journalism to do for us. And so that's really important, I think. That, and next month we will have a Tuesday evening um, series of films uh, that will celebrate Pride Month. 
And, and as of right now, we, we haven't gotten to the end of what is exactly going to be, but look for Tuesday evening um, movies that will celebrate Pride Month. Um, finally, uh, in the last few months, uh, the committee has worked to uh, do a complete audit of our DVDs downstairs. You may or may not know this, but down in the lower level, right by the old clock, is uh, our DVD library, which has, every time I try to count it, I get a n different number, so I really don't know how many are there, but they're somewhere between five and 600 DVDs. And there's some wonderful DVDs in that collection. They are open to any resident. All you have to do is go down there, sign it out, take it, and go enjoy it. Um, also, we have a, a brand new, updated catalog of all of the DVDs in our collection that is down there by it. It has, instead of a white cover, a very, very loud um, orange cover. So you can't miss it. So if you have any suggestions about uh, movies you'd like to see, um, we're always looking for new ideas and new things to do. Any questions? Thank you very much. Yes, oh. The answer is yes. There is, well, number one, we have a, a lot of DVDs and we, we can buy, we have, we have a budget for uh, buying DVDs. We also subscribe to four streaming services, including Netflix, uh, um, Amazon uh, Prime Video, I think Disney Plus, and, uh, and Apple TV. So, and most all of the, of the, uh, Movies that we screen are on Amazon Prime, and so that's that is the primary way. So we we have the capability of streaming, uh, and of using DVDs. Yeah. So for for those people who did away with their DVD players, yeah, are there? Any well, you're just out of luck, I guess. <laughs> um, I don't. Yes, uh, what about those people who, who uh, did aware with their, their DVD players? Well, I think, I think it was, um, it, it, you, it shouldn't have been done. <laughs> so I, I bought a DVD player. Uh, you can buy a, a fine DVD player for less than $100. Oh, you can buy one for less than 20 really. There you go. Do I hear 10? So it is not a major investment to get a DVD player. And then you have the ability, you have uh, access to all of that stuff we have in the lower level. Yeah. You mentioned the cult movies. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, the Cove also, uh, Susanna, are you here today? Susanna, sorry. Um, she is a member of the committee and, and, and she is in charge of the Cove movies, and uh, they they show a movie every month, one, uh, and it's on the third Thursday, Wednesday, Wednesday of the month, and uh, she's showing two um, documentaries uh, this this coming Wednesday. Um, thank you for reminding me. Anything else? Thank you. All right. Thank you for hanging in there. We're getting close. Let's hear about the floor chairs, all right? And we'd like to hear some interesting things that are going on in your floor, and we'll start with the 10th floor. Oh, wait, Don. Georgia, 
pretend you uh, live on the 10th floor. I wish I had something really fun to talk about. Um, we are a good group of uh, finding each other uh, by the puzzle. And uh, we have some good talks at that time. Oh my goodness. Yes, now we, we have artwork. We have new artwork throughout one whole hall. One whole hall. And we invite you up to uh, see uh, many of Keith's works um, just put up this last week. Uh, what else? See, I forgot Teresa was here from us. Thank you. All right. How about the ninth floor? Thank you. Um, the ninth floor, oh, okay. The ninth floor has uh, put up a display if anyone wants to come up and see it, it is the across from the elevators for the month of May. And what we did was we asked our residents if they would like to write something about their mother. So we have some really nice little anecdotes and some stories about their mother's history and things like that that are displayed in front of the window. So if you'd like to come up and see those. And the other thing, um, I just want to say how impressed I am with the response these days of the resident engagement team. I have a very good friend who is a, an excellent poet, and she suggested to me that she would love to come and teach a class here. And what she does is she was, she's a longtime teacher. She's very good at it, and she's very gentle. So it would be a safe place to be and not intimidating. There are still some places in the class. It starts next Tuesday. I suggested it to um, Pedro, who then told Kristen about it, and they took care of talking to her and seeing if that would be something that would be appropriate for Hearthstone residents. And so it is, and her class will start next Tuesday at 1 o'clock and run for three weeks on Tuesdays for an hour and a half. And the sign-up sheet is in the business center in the lower level. So if you're interested at all, please come to the poetry class. Thank you. Thank you. Eighth floor. Yep. Jean's bringing you a mic. <laughs> OK. Um, the beginning of May, when we got out of our elevator, we saw quite a few very interesting hats and a sign-up sheet that had the names of all the horses that were running in the Kentucky Derby. And our Mary Kay um, put together this really fun um, thing for us to do. We all signed up, uh, whatever horse we liked the name of, and um, then we kind of followed them, and it got us into you know looking and reading about them and so on. And then the day of the der oh, and each person when they signed up put a little money in the kitty. So uh, when the Derby was run, there was a winner, which is Sue. And uh, half the money went to our floor uh, uh, fund, and the other half went to Sue. And it was so much fun that we are planning on doing it for the next two races. So uh, it's, it's just, uh, just a fun, we all talked about it. Uh, the other thing that we're doing is we're having a field trip to the bistro on next Thursday, because a lot of people on our floor have not been over there. And we're going by walking. Uh, rickshaw, and if necessary, cars. Great. Thank you. <laughs> How about the seventh floor? Jim. Thank you. Uh, we have uh, had one person move uh, into the assisted living, and uh, that leaves us with four vacancies. But uh, in, in listening to Jill from marketing, it sounds like she's got some uh, good plans for those, and hopefully that'll get worked out. We're looking to have some more people in there. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Sixth floor. Anybody from the sixth floor? Jackie. Here comes Jackie. Jean, behind you. Hello. Hi, Jackie. Um, I'm the new chair of Jackie, the Jackie, would you do me a favor? Come on up here so that the... TV screen can see you, the TV camera can see you. Good, wonderful. Uh, to report on our floor to start with, 
due to the fact that Meg generously um, volunteered as secretary for the executive board and the assembly, we had to change positions on our unit. So I am the new floor chair and Molly is the new vice chair. So I get to come to these meetings. I also have to figure out what it is I'm supposed to be doing. Um, and so uh, Frank and I have been talking just briefly about what's happening to the resident council part of the Hearthstones process. So I guess that's being talked about, right? Yep. So from our floor's point of view, um, we have a game night every the last Friday of every month. And so we would like to invite others to come. There's a number of choices of games, and it really depends on who's there as to what choices you make. So come on down the last Friday at 7 o'clock in our lounge. Thank you, Jackie. Fifth floor. Yeah. I really would rather not come to the front because I want to introduce the newest resident of the fifth floor. Okay. That's Carol Beach. Hi, Carol. Welcome yeah. to the Hearthstone. That's the most exciting thing we've done. We have one unit still available, 522. Okay, thank you. Fourth floor, assisted living. Here come, there's a mic right here. There you go. Uh, hi. Uh, got it. Um, we have a couple of new residents who've come in, um, and we there are several others who are about to come in, so uh, we're getting crowded, and that's... That's good because with this comes the opportunity to establish more of a social connection and that's the direction and that's the direction we're taking to become more engaged with each other. So good. Thank you. Cove East. There you go. Cove East. Nobody. Going once. Okay, Cove West. There we go. Hello, uh, my name is Elaine. I'm the newly elected chair of Cove West. I would say uh, all is quiet on the Western Front. <laughs> <laughs> However, not to be outdone, we have also um, whipped up a little Kentucky Derby event. Oh. No money involved, I'm thankful for that, because I would have lost it all. Uh, today we are at our happy hour. We will be donning our best head headgear and finery, and the winners of the uh, bets will be announced, prizes to be awarded. Um, our building is about um, getting to know each other and having a lot of fun in that process. Thank you. Super, a Mad Hatter contest. <laughs> All right. So let me touch on a couple other quick things. Um, Laura Sanders, who lives in Cove East, is very much involved in an organization, the Washington Continuing Care Residents Association. WACRA is a group that is, has representatives from communities like ours, and, and they hold monthly meetings. And she wanted me to let you know that, that the next the WACRA meeting in June will be held here. And uh, residents will, you know, are, are welcome to attend. And there will be an, a, a thing in the spark about that that give, will give you a little bit more detail. Um, also, uh, many of you have read different things. I just want to touch on it again about lunch with Reggie on Wednesday. The basic genesis of that is Reggie's desire and, and our desire to get Reggie uh, have him more involved in meeting with, with uh, residents. And so we set up a system where uh, we, the executive board, met with, had lunch with Reggie uh, last week. He's gone um, this week. Uh, and let me actually say the reason he wasn't here this morning, he has a personal thing he has to take care of and, and couldn't make it. Um, but you can sign up to uh, do one of these Wednesday lunches by just simply contacting Hallie and she'll put you on the list. 
It'll be a while because, because we're going through, uh, the next several lunches are with floor chairs, and then it, it's open, and, and more than 15 people, I think, have signed up already. So it's just a, it's a, a chat, an informal chance to get together and, and have a chat. So I want to take a minute to talk about something that, that uh, actually Jackie raised and, and several of you have talked to me about, and that is, is what we're doing about meetings and the resident council. So um, I want to make sure that I, I say this correctly. So that requires me to put on glasses so that I can read my notes. So during the past two and a half years of COVID, almost all the regular meetings for residents came to a complete stop. As we, as we have emerged, um, there's been some more confusion about who meets when, where, why, how. So we, and when I say we, I mean the executive committee, all of us, we've been discussing this quite a bit. And as we move back to pre-COVID times, we're trying to clear up the confusion. We've discussed it at length. Meg Ludlam, boy, are we lucky to have her as a secretary, has been digging, digging deeply into not just the bylaws, but the records of what went on before. She's drafted a report on the roles and responsibilities of the floor in building chairs and vice chairs. There are many responsibilities, by the way. So for the discussion, let me just be real clear about naming of groups. The bylaws says that this group, we are the executive committee. The residence council is made up of the five elected officers, a chair and vice chair from each floor and each of the Cove buildings, as well as one representative from the health center. Now that's 25 people plus the five of us, six of us actually, so here we are at, at 31. About meetings, this assembly, as we talked about last time, is set for 10 a.m. on the second Thursday of the month, and it's open to all Hearthstone residents. Now several people have asked, when is the resident council meeting? That's the one the bylaws states to take place on the Tuesday before this meeting. Now that's a large meeting of 30 some people. And the idea is, if we go back to the old ways, that meeting takes place just two days before this assembly. And that's the meeting where all kinds of things get discussed, and then we figure out, okay, what do we bring to the assembly? Well, that doesn't give the executive committee time to really get ready for an assembly that's you know, orderly and makes sense. So what we are doing is looking at some flexibility around those dates. Remember, floor and building representatives will have three meetings each month. The floor meeting, the residence council meeting, the assembly. And then we have a fourth meeting. That's a lot of meetings for voluntary groups, all right? We will have resident council meetings with all floor chairs and building chairs. We just need time to make sure that they're functional and worth the time and effort. So here's the ideal situation. At floor meetings, floor representatives will gather information about issues, concerns, whatever else you want to gather information on. At the residence council, that's that big meeting with 30 people, those items are brought to the large group. Whatever transpires at that meeting then needs to be brought to the assembly by the executive committee. So the executive committee comes and says, okay, here's what happened. And of course, individual floor chairs can bring things to the general assembly as well. But that all can't be put together in that one day between Tuesday and Thursday. So we're working toward making it operate smoothly. We appreciate your understanding and your patience as we try and make this all come together. I want you to know that we're working on it. We're not ignoring it. We just need to make sure it all comes together. We hope to have that all done in the relatively near future, which of course at our age could be anywhere from two days to three years. So um, I hope that gives you a sense of, of what we're doing and where we're going. All right? Um, I think this has been really kind of a great meeting. Uh, it's information rich. I mean, we heard from Pedro about the engagement committee meetings, upcoming newsletter, more trips, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Rosie talked about vaccines next week. Tim talks about if your AC isn't working, contact him now before it gets too hot. The sidewalks, well, I, 
I will caution him a little bit. He said we're working on it quickly. Interaction with the city of Seattle, like any government, is not necessarily quick, but it's underway, all right? And Jill, lots of good news about money, 90% occupancy, and the strong response. And I would ask you, suggest you go look at the uh, Hearthstone website, hearthstone.com, because it's, it's really well done. Um, pardon? Not dot com, oh, dot org. Thank you very much, Penny. Dot org. Um, also, if you just Google Hearthstone Seattle, it'll it'll take you there. So, um, I think we just simply need to say thank you all for coming. Um, and is there a treasury report? We did have a treasury report at the very beginning. Yeah. Oh, the Hearthstone Treasury Report. No, there is not. That's something we, we can talk about. So um, I would ask if there's a motion for adjournment. Do I hear a second? All in favor say aye. aye. All right. Remember, it's Mother's Day this weekend. Don't forget to celebrate. And just in case you didn't know it, today is also All You Can Eat Day. So order two desserts. Thanks for coming. We'll see you next time.